Hi everybody, welcome back. I'm the Stretch Professor, and today we're going to be doing an in-depth guide for Season 8 Lulu. So thank you very much to Kristoff for the very generous donation. Um, if you want to access this Google Doc, you can find it in the description. I'll also have some timestamps if you want to jump around if you don't have time to watch the whole video. So we're going to go over her abilities, like how to use them, why I think she's strong overall in the meta right now, we'll talk about her strengths, weaknesses... I'll go into recommended runes, recommended items, and at the very end, I'll touch very briefly on uh, the matchups that she's best in and some that she might kind of struggle in. Okay, let's go ahead and look at Lulu, though. All right, so Lulu is very strong as of right now, 8.6, and I usually she's good in a lot of metas, and I think she's going to be very good moving forward for a few reasons. So you haven't seen Lulu a ton in the past. We did see her near the back half of last year in the Ardent Sensor meta when that was really popular. But historically, Janna has crowded out Lulu. Um, and the reason for that, as far as like the top enchanter spot, and the reason for that is Janna had a much stronger shield in the past. Janna had a 240 shield. Um, I suppose Lulu at one point had a 240 shield as well. Uh, but Janna's shield was also on a 10 second cooldown. Now Janna's shield, I think at level one, is an 18 second cooldown. Uh, so it's much lower. Let me see where Lulu... Yeah, they lowered her uh, her shield in 7.10 down a little bit. Um, and historically, a lot of champions have re like gone for crit. Lulu's still good with crit champions, but Janna, in some sense, is even better on crit champions or like AD burst assassin type of champions because um, Janna gives AD, whereas Lulu gives on-hit damage as their primary steroids. Another thing that Lulu's kind of struggled with in the past has been early game aggression, uh, particularly from poke champions like Nami, like Sona, like Karma. And the reason for that is she has pretty low ranges. So the range on her E harassment's only 650, which is really short, especially when you compare that to something like a Karma, who I think has over 900 range on her Q. Um, so she can get poked out pretty easily in a poke meta. Um, Zyra has really uh, messed with her a lot early too. And Sona and Nama, like I said, because they have heals in their kit. Lulu does not have a heal, so they have a much more, um, a much better trading pattern early on. So that's why historically you haven't seen a ton of Lulu. As she struggles in lane historically against other enchanters, and Janna has just crowded her out as the premier scaling support. Well, this season. Lots has changed, okay? So, um, Janna has been nerfed repeatedly. She's still good, but she is decidedly pretty bad early game. Like, she's never been great early game, and now she's really bad early game because that shield starts with the 18-second cooldown, like I said before, which is massive. That gives you, like, double the trading opportunities against her. Um, so you can bait that shield out, and now you're going to have the full 18 seconds early on um, to trade more damage back onto her. So that's really strong. Also... Um, Sona has been nerfed a lot to where she just can't trade nearly as well as she used to and she's very mana intensive and it requires a tier of the goddess for Sona so that means that she's going to be really far behind in the arms race to you know redemption, ardent sensor, Mikhail's, all the good enchanter stuff so Lulu doesn't have mana problems that are that extensive so she can get away with just rushing redemption a lot of the time and be fine in lane so that basically gives Lulu a 750 gold advantage over uh, Sona in a lot of circumstances um, Nami is really good right now, and Nami is probably the best champion against Lulu, but Lulu can still outscale Nami later in the game because of the way that her Whimsy, her E, and her uh, passive all interact, which we'll talk about here in a second. Um, another thing that's changed is the runes have changed quite a bit, so... Um, particularly Bone Plating and Chrysalis have made Lulu very, very durable in lane. She is very good at harassing early on with Airy. Also, Airy plus Scorch, she does quite a bit of damage early on. So, um, that's really doubled down on her early game aggression. And she scales really well with Airy. She's one of the best Airy users in the game because early on she can use Airy very aggressively, very effectively. And then later on she can transition to have Airy on her shield, which is, you know, really strong. Uh, so, she uses Airy very well. Versus someone like Janna can kind of harass early if you get a couple of points in W, but it's not going to be nearly as strong as Lulu. So Lulu is excellent at leveraging the early game power of the sorcery tree and then transitioning into late game. So she just kind of has the smoothest transition from laning to late. Also, uh, leveling up her shield 
and this is really important too, allows you to be aggressive early on, but it also transitions to being a, one of your best mid-game uh, powers as well, because it's both your damage and your shield. So, um, that's really good. Also, there's been a rise lately in on-hit champions. Ginsu's Rageblade, Rage Blade, particularly with this new rework, has been really strong. We've seen more on-hit champions like Varus, like Kog'Maw, and Lu is excellent with on-hit champions, which we'll talk about here in a second. So she's okay with, like, caster champions like Jin and Misfortune, but she's really, really good with people who are going to be getting, like, Hurricane, Wit's End, Arden Sensor, especially Wit's End. She's super strong with Wit's End because it lowers magic resist, which means that Pix is going to do even more damage. So that's how the meta has shaped up over the last little bit to make Lulu stronger. A lot of her competition has been nerfed down, and she's particularly good with the runes um, and just the itemization changes over the last, uh, I don't know, since the preseason, pretty much. She's been pretty pretty strong. So that's why you might be wondering, well, why haven't we seen a lot of her? Why are we seeing her now? And I would expect to start seeing her in pro play at some point in the near future, most likely. Again. Okay, so let's talk about some of these abilities. What makes Lulu so strong? All right, well, um, first of all, her passive is extremely valuable. It does not look like much. It's like, oh, just 15 on-hit damage. That's a really, really big deal, especially early game auto attacks. Having 15 extra on-hit is a big deal. And then you can put it on your ally. So if you, um, if you cast E on an AD carry or anyone else that has a lot of auto attack damage, it gives them that on-hit damage for six seconds. And you might be wondering, well... How much is that really worth? Well, I went ahead and did the math for you here. That passive on Lulu, when you're level 9, gives you 63 on-hit damage. On-hit damage is valued at 25 gold a pop. So that's 1575 gold at level 9. 1575 on that passive. So that's like giving your AD carry an extra 3 kills or so. 5 kills. Each kill is worth about 300 gold, depending on bounty and all that stuff. So it's like giving your AD carry 5 free kills because of that stat value. One thing that's different about Lulu from Janna as well, and this has hurt Janna also because her shield has been lowered, is that when Janna's shield breaks, you lose the AD. Because it says the AD lasts as long as the shield holds on the E. So if you put it on someone who's taking damage to protect them, then that AD is going to wear off. right? It's You're only going to get the maximum value on the AD if you shield like your AD carry on the back line who's not taking damage most of the time. So that AD does get knocked off quite a bit. Not so with Lulu. With Lulu, you put the ticks on you put the picks on somebody, it shields them for six seconds, and they keep picks. Even if the shield breaks, they still keep the picks. So if someone's trying to attack your AD carry and you shield them, if it's like an AD carry duel, she's gonna get the full benefit of having picks on her for the entire time. It does not fall off when the shield breaks. That's a very, very key distinction between Janna and Lulu in really tough all in fights is that Lulu's passive is going to stay there the entire time. And at level 9, you're getting 29, 25 gold in value. That's almost 10 kills worth of value at level 18. I think I said level 9, but level 18. When you're max level, it just keeps scaling throughout the whole game, which is insane. And it has an AP ratio on it. It's a 0.15, which doesn't sound like much, um, but I did the math down here, I think, when I was talking about, uh, I think, Ardent Sensor. Yeah. Um... Basically, every point of AP that you get is going to give you about 3.75 gold extra worth of attack speed. And, um, you know, a point of AP is 21.75 gold each. And so you're getting about 17% more efficiency out of AP. So that means that AP scales really well on her. I mean, to put that in perspective, every 100 AP that you get here, you're going to get an extra 15, um, 15 on hit damage, which is worth 25 a pop. So it's like you're getting an extra 375 gold every 100 AP that you get. Now, you're not going to stack a lot of AP with her, but it's really nice that it scales both with level and with AP. And they just released Shirelia's Reverie, which you won't get all the time, but it is a situational item that you could get on Lulu. And, um, you know, she does benefit pretty heavily from that AP. So that is really helpful. Um, so, yeah, so her passive, very strong, excellent harassment early, excellent scaling. Um... And this is every time somebody auto-attacks. So the more attack speed they have, 
the more they're going to trigger this. So it scales really, really hard with attack speed. So it not only scales with your level, not only scales with your AP, but also scales with the attack speed of whomever you put this on. And this can be a traditional AD carry like a Kog'Maw or a Twitch, or it could also be something like a Master Yi. Melee attacks also trigger picks. You don't see it because it's right in their face, but it does trigger picks. So if you put the, um, the E on someone like Master Yi, it is going to trigger um, every single time they auto attack. And if they have anything that's like a double strike like Master Yi, or if they have something like Ginsu's Rage Blade, with the Rage uh, double hit every second hit, then that will also trigger uh, picks twice. Now, Hurricane does not send picks to each individual bolt, so you don't get three picks activations every time you attack with Hurricane. That'd be a bit ridiculous. Uh, but you do get one activation every time you attack, and anything that triggers multiple attacks will trigger picks twice. Okay, so anyways, one of the most powerful passives on a support in the game. It's extremely strong. Um, okay, so let's talk about the rest of her kit. All right, she has decent wave clear early on with her Q. Now, this is something that people used to max uh, second, or sometimes even first. Not Maybe not max, but get like three points in lane. That is still an option if you want to do that, but they have um, nerfed this over time, so it only does 70% against enemies. Um, that it goes through, so it doesn't wave clear nearly as strong as it used to. But it does pretty respectable damage early on. I mean, 1.80 damage for 50 mana is a pretty good bargain. And so typically you'll just get one point in this. This has 925 range, but it's a pretty slender hitbox. It's fairly easy to dodge, but this is like a decent tool. <clears throat> if they're like under tower or something, and you can't get close enough to E them, um, you can do this, and this will trigger airy, so you will get the extra airy damage on top of it. So this is not this is really closer to like a hundred damage instead of eighty most of the time. And it has decent wave clear, as I said before. So if you're in a heavy push lane, if you're in a lane with like Sivir or Caitlyn or something like that, and you're trying to push them in a tower, you could in theory get two or three points in this. Um, it does have really nice scaling. It stays cheap relative. It stays relatively cheap mana cost wise, and it has pretty good scaling, like 45 extra damage per uh, point in it. So it's pretty decent. Um, but yeah, early on, just nice aggression early, not super useful later. It's good, but the thing is your E and your W are much better. Um, so you usually don't want to get a lot of points in this unless you're going for that early game push lane. Okay, now it's important to note that this fires off of both Lulu and Picks. So, in theory, you can shoot people with picks as well. Let me pull up a map here, and I'll show you how this works with her E. Um, so, there are some tricky things you can do here with picks. Or with the, the Q, rather, whatever it's called. Glitter Lance. Okay, here we go. Alright, so... It fires, so basically Lulu fires it from her position and Pix fires it from Pix's position. So what you can do is, um, let's say that the support is up here. You can um, put Pix on them with the E. Okay, there's Pix. And then you can Q and point it this way and Pix will actually shoot here and potentially hit the AD carry. So you can bounce it like that. You can do E and then picks and shoot somebody. This is really nice if someone thinks they're being really cute, like they're trying to stick around with like 50 health or something and just get one last hit or so. Um, you can put the picks on somebody and then bounce it off of them to hit somebody else. This is also really nice on slows, So because um, it does slow for 80%. Now it decays over time. But it does slow by a really good chunk. And that slow doesn't scale per level. So it's a really good one-point wonder. Um, but this is really nice uh, if you can't quite get to the priority target on like a gank. Let's grab the jungler here really quickly. Let's say that you can't get to a priority target on the gank. Let's say your jungler's coming in here. AD carry starts running, but the support doesn't. You're right here. You can't quite get to um, the AD carry, but you can do this sequence here, E onto somebody, and then Q onto the uh, onto the enemy, slow them, and give the jungler time to come over here and kill him. Right? So you can bounce off and get the slow. Another thing you can do, let's say that once again, you're pretty far back here. So you're kind of pushed in. Um, 
Let's say maybe Hecarim's like running up here or something like that. He's going for a little lane gank. Oh, let's get rid of that. Okay. Um, Hecarim's coming in for a little lane gank. You could, in theory, uh, shield the Hecarim. So cast that shield on Hecarim. Then when he goes in here, and then the AD carry like flashes, then you can bounce your picks off of Hecarim that you just shielded and hit the um, the AD carry. So if you have a Diver, if you have an Olaf or a Skarner or something like that that's running at people and they're going to get really far ahead of you, then you can go ahead and shield them and then use your Q to bounce off of them um, to do... Uh, to get that slow on other people. So that's something that's really nice. It's kind of an advanced tactic with Lulu, but remember that you can put the shield on different people, whether allies or enemies, and then use your Q to bounce off of them. So the maximum range um, on this, let's see, so pick stays within 2,000 range. So you can get your shield range. Well, I mean, you can put the shield on somebody, and then they can run up to... 2,000 range, and in theory, you can shoot your Glitter Lance off of them, so you could have up to close to, like, 3,000 range on your Q. In theory. Um, so that's really far. That's not going to happen a lot of the time. You know, the most common thing that could happen is, like, 650 range, you hit somebody, and then you go for this extra 925, which is still, like, 1575 range. But even if your AD carry runs ahead up to 2,000 radius... Um, then you could still fire it from there. So that's just a really nice thing to be aware of. It doesn't come up a ton, but it is helpful um, to do that. If for no other reason than the slow is really nice. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, if you hit people with multiple bolts, then it, it doesn't count. So the really common trading pattern that you'll see in lane is you go up, you cast E on them, which is just a point click, deals damage, put pick, puts picks on them, and then um, you auto attack. So you're going to hit them with your auto, it's going to hit them with the picks bolts, and then you Q off of them to hit the same person. So picks, almost always when you attack them with it, picks is in front of them. So the combo is you E them on the front here. So you E them on the front, it'll put picks right here, and then you have picks just shoot through them to go to the next one. Now you can have picks shoot like this way uh, to try to hit the 80 carry, but if you do that, it might not hit the person that you originally hit. And people can juke picks, like smart players can juke picks. So whenever you put picks on them with the E, if they just wiggle side to side, picks will wiggle. Now, I'm not exactly sure the behavior on that wiggle, but if she, like, moves to the right, then picks will move to the left. And if she moves to the uh, left, picks will move to the right a lot of times. So, something that's very common is, you know, they might turn around to run this way and they'll, like, juke picks. So, they can wiggle back and forth and make picks, like, go back and forth also. And so, it makes it can make it kind of hard to aim the picks um, against a, a more competent player. But if you do it virtually instantly, you hit picks on them, then immediately Q forward, you're going to hit them with um, both casts. So typically, you just go up, you E, auto attack, use picks to slow them, and then back up. And that's going to trigger Scorch, and it's going to trigger Airy a lot of the time. So it's a really good chunk of damage early on if you go for um, Airy and Frostfang. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the basic trading pattern early on. And then later on, it transitions into a shield. A pretty decent shield. 210 with a 0. .6 ratio. So once again, not quite... It's basically the same as Janna on the 210, but Janna has a 0. .7 um, on the ratio, and Lou only has a 0. .6. But unlike Janna, like I explained before, it, it serves this dual purpose of you can get three points in it comfortably in lane, harass with it, use this uh, E plus Q combo, and then you can also transition later into the game to using this as your shield for mid-game team fights. So that is awesome. Because as Janna right now, there's this huge debate, and people debate me all the time on the channel, is they'll say, well, shouldn't I get a bunch of points in W? How are you supposed to pressure lane without W? Well, the answer is you can't really pressure lane as Janna without W. But if you get a lot of points in W, you're not going to have your shield for the mid-game. So you're going to have this 18-second garbage shield that's only going to shield for like 70 at level 9 when your team's trying to fight for a dragon 
or like really trying to group up and get a tower or a rift herald or whatever and you're gonna have virtually no defense for your team you're gonna be sitting there with this w that's not really gonna matter outside the laning phase a lot of the time and so that's a real dilemma with Janna. it's like well do you skip do you spec for this early game or do you spec for the mid to late game with Janna, i say you should spec for the mid to late game you should be leveling up that shield but with Lulu, you don't have that dilemma. You can still comfortably get three points in E, do early damage, and have a great shield for the mid game. It's awesome. And you can keep leveling that up if you want all the way to level nine, or you could even put just like four points in it if you want. But then eventually you'll want to get points in W, which we'll describe here in a second. I just want to say a little bit more about E, but the W is also really, really nice. This is one of the best enchanter abilities in the game. It might be the best enchanter ability in the game. Um... So Pix does damage. It's on a 10-second cooldown, starting at level 1, rather than 18 seconds of Janna. Has a nice shield. Puts Pix on people, so if you put that on somebody, it's going to add the uh, the Fairy Companion to them, so that when they do their auto attacks, they get all this bonus damage. So it scales off of their attack speed. Um, and it also provides True Sight. Um which is really, really relevant against a lot of champions. So this ability right here can completely hose some champions. This can crush a Kali. So if a Kali's trying to go into her Ghost Shroud or whatever, if you have picks on him, it's going to see her. It's really good against Twitch. If he tries to run away and you have the E on him, your team's going to still be able to see him. Um, it's very good against Vayne. So when she's trying to roll around and turn invisible... And you put this E on him, then you're still going to be able to see him. It's good against Kha'Zix. When he tries to turn invisible, you can see him with it. So this is really, really nice against uh, invisible champions. And there are more and more of those becoming popular. So in theory, you can see Evelyn. But usually, you know, Evelyn's not going to escape that much uh, once, once you're in range to get her with picks. She's probably all in. But it can be relevant there as well, so... Anything that potentially could turn invisible or anyone that's like trying to run into a bush or something like that, it's still going to keep sight of them, which is very helpful sometimes if you have that E on them and you're out of wards and they try to like flash into a bush or something, your team will still be able to see them and maybe take one last skill shot at them. So very relevant in a lot of situations that it still gives true sight of the person when you have picks on them. Uh, and it only lasts for four seconds when you put it on the enemy, but still very relevant. Okay, so let's talk about Whimsy here. This ability is ridiculous. This is so, so strong. It's so good. Um, so it can polymorph somebody for 2.25 seconds. That is that is ridiculous. Like one of the only enchanter abilities that's a standard ability that does more than this would be like a Morgana Bind, which lasts for three seconds, which is also pretty crazy. But that Bind, people can still cast spells. They can still use summoners, except for... Um, uh, except for Flash, they could still cleanse themselves, they could still um, use, uh, like, Mikhail's Crucible, but you can't do that, right? Even if they have a Mikhail's Crucible, if you polymorph the support, they can't Crucible themselves to get out of it. They can Quicksilver Sash out of it if it's, like, an AD carry or something, so you want to be aware of that. But, really nice, hard CC. The only kind of downside here is it doesn't stop people from moving. So if someone's trying to chase you and they're moving pretty quickly and you whimsy them, they're still going to be on top of you when they wake up from whimsy a lot of the time. So that does make it more dangerous than a standard stun. So they can still move around, albeit very slowly, while they're polymorphed. Because um, it only reduces their basic movement speed by 60. Um, yeah, it, it describes what it does here. It's basically a stun, but they can move pretty much now keep in mind this is a projectile too she actually throws this at the person so it can be blocked by things like um i think it can be blocked by braum shield i know it can be blocked by wind wall um any sort of like invulnerability can outplay this like they could zanya's it uh fiora can repost it um camille can jump it shaco can do his ult and dodge it so it is a projectile that can be dodged or evaded by anything else now it's very fast um so it's kind of hard to do that but it can be done especially against something like master Yi, you want to be very careful because what happens with master Yi is usually when he's running at you he's going to immediately alpha strike and his alpha strike range is about the same range as whimsy i don't remember the exact 
thing on it. So you don't just want to try to walk up and polymorph a Master Yi that is running straight at you because he's going to dodge it most of the time on accident. He's not going to outplay you and do it. He's just naturally going to try to run up and alpha strike you. So a lot of the time. Um, so just keep that in mind. A lot of times you might want to try to wait just an extra little bit and see if he alpha strikes early. If he doesn't alpha strike, you might have to try to whimsy him anyways. Um, but yeah, against champions like that that can go invulnerable, just be careful. But otherwise, very strong crowd control. The other component is it gives your... Um, whoever you target, if you target an ally with it, 45% attack speed and 30% movement speed. This is huge. And the movement speed scales with AP. You get an extra 5% per 100, which is not like game-breaking, but it's pretty good. Um, and it lasts for a long time. It lasts from like 3 to 4 seconds. That's a really long time to get a buff like this. So you might be saying, well, how much is that worth gold-wise? Well, I did it right here for you. The W value at level 9 is worth uh, 1,185 gold worth of move speed and 1,125 gold worth of attack speed, which is 2,310 gold. Um, so the total value, and I said level 10, so this picks is actually going to be worth a little bit more, whatever, um, than I calculated here. But just as a general idea, it's going to be worth about 3,885 gold if you put both of these on your AD carry or anyone else that can fully benefit from the attack speed and the move speed. What I mean, that just for perspective, that's about 13 kills worth of stats. Just let that sink in. That's like your AD carry looks like they have two kills when Lulu puts W on them and E on them at level 10 when she has a max out W and a max out um, E. It's going to be crazy. Um, or not not maxed out E. When she has maxed out W, um, well, she could just do this. And her passive, yeah, she could do it at level 9. I don't know why I was thinking it had to be level 10. Yeah, okay, so that's accurate. It could be level 9. Because this is just a passive. You don't have to put any points in this. You just naturally get this. And then her W maxed out. So if it could be level, if you max out your shield, or you get a few points in the shield, then your W is not going to come online until you're level... Um, 10 if you put like three points in e and lane and then try to max w after that then you wouldn't fully max it out until level 10 but whatever level 9 level 10 depending on how your skill order once you get that w maxed out and you put that on somebody it's 13 kills so if that you know kogma looks like he only has two kills he actually has 15 kills when she puts all that stuff on him I mean, this is why, like, when Lulu is paired with Kog'Maw, this is why they just completely evaporate the enemy team because of the way that Kog'Maw itemizes, which we'll talk about here in a second, and why he works so well with Lulu. But that's why it feels like you just evaporate people with Lulu because of all these buffs that she has on people. It's ridiculous. It's so much stuff. And that obviously doesn't even include, like, the shield that you get off of the EE or anything like that. This is just straight up. You just cast Whimsy on him, put your shield on him, go to work um, with the uh, Pix passive plus the W. So that is very, very strong. And this scales off of the on-hit stuff. Like I said before, anyone, like it's going to help them stack Gensu's faster. It's going to, um, you know, help them auto attack more so they get more Pix activations. It's going to help them, you know, if it's Twitch or Kog'Maw, it's going to help them stack their poison faster or get in more um, Arcane Barrage uh, hits. So it's just extremely good. Extremely good, especially on attack speed champions. Now, this is not going to do as much on someone like a Jin, right? Because he doesn't benefit that heavily from attack speed. It does convert over to AD, but it's not as useful. And because he doesn't attack as fast, well, Pix is not going to be as helpful either. But even if you do have a gen on your team, with Lulu, you can still polymorph someone on the enemy team, right? You might be doing this half the time anyways. If they have an assassin, sometimes you have to polymorph the assassin, and that's more valuable than, you know, whimsying the Kog'Maw. Just crowd controlling that Zed for, you know, two and a half seconds here, two and a quarter seconds, um, can sometimes be even better than giving the whimsy. So she just has multiple modes that are good for all kinds of different situations. And the, so with this, you get cooldown reduction for each one of it. You get extra attack speed, you get extra duration, and you get extra polymorph. So there are four different ways that this scales with levels. And so that's why you want to level this up as fast as possible, because it just has insane scaling. So yeah, that's very, very powerful on Lulu. And then finally, you have her ultimate. Now, the key thing about this ult is 
it is an infusion of health it is not a heal and it can overheal to an extent right so you can cast this on someone who is full health and still um they would get the max benefit out of it whereas if you try to heal somebody with soraka or you try to use a janna ult on somebody who's full health it can't overheal so they're not going to get the benefit off of it how are we looking on time here we're taking a little bit of time but that's okay um because there's a lot to think about here because lulu is a bit more complicated than people expect um so you can use this as crowd control it does knock people up for about one second three quarters of a second so this does trigger like yasuo so lulu is a great combo with yasuo um but you can use it for crowd control so if your olaf's running in and you know that the enemy is about to do some kind of like jump away or whatever you can go ahead and wild growth them just to knock them up just to stop them from flashing just to chain cc together so that is a really powerful potential ability and because you can do this before while the person's at full health it can help you against assassins who potentially could one shot somebody so like fizz so if fizz fishes somebody um then you can go ahead and wild growth them if you have to before the e lands and they'll already have that bonus health ready um, so that's a real perk of someone like Lulu over Janna in those types of situations is Janna is reactive. They have to actually take the damage first and then you um, can R them and they have to stay in that R and channel. It's also on a really low cooldown. So this is only a 110 second cooldown whereas a Janna ult I think is 150. So it's a lot faster. So this is up very often. So you can use this pretty liberally. If you have to use it aggressively on someone... Um, just to get that crowd control, just to knock people up, you can do that. Also, it does apply a slow for seven seconds as well. So that helps um, some champions stick to people. So it'll help Olaf stick to people who are around him. Um, it'll help Malachi stick to people. It just adds that extra little bit of stickiness because of that slow aura around them. Now, it's not a very large aura. It's only 150 range. So they have to like be right on top of them. But that can be useful. And it's very good with divers because it has 900 range. So it has really far range. And um, you don't have to channel it. You can just fire it once and forget it and then move on and do something else. So that's really good with the Olaf, once again, who's running in. Or the Kha'Zix who jumps in. Or the Shaco who jumps in to assassinate somebody. So she's very good with assassins and she's very good with divers. Because you can just put this on them, add that crowd control, give them that infusion of health, add the slow, and boom, it's instant on a low cooldown. So, it's fantastic. Now, one downside, and it gets around Ignite or other Grievous Wounds like Morella Nomicon because it's, a, it's an infusion of health. It is not a heal. So, this is way better than a normal heal. They will keep the health. Um, so, you know, if they don't use all of it, then they do get to keep the health. But it gets around Ignite because it's not an infusion of health. However, because it's also not a heal, because it's an infusion of health, it does not scale with plus healing and shielding. So, you know, if you have Mikhail's plus Redemption or whatever, you're not going to get an extra 30% health on this. It does not scale with that at all. So that kind of sucks that it doesn't scale with plus healing and shielding, but it does have those other perks like being able to overheal and getting around Ignite um, that kind of balances out to an extent. Um, now, the plus healing and shielding does affect uh, your picks, so it is still a valuable stat. It, it affects your E, um, but it doesn't affect your ult. So plus healing and shielding doesn't scale as well with lulu as it does with someone like janna or soraka but it's still a pretty good stat so you're not missing out on as much if you want to get ardent sensor which we'll talk about later if you want to do that instead of getting redemption um but as a lot of times i still get redemption anyways so really cool ability has lots of utility you know it can be used defensively it can be used offensively low cooldown just great i mean you could use it on cho'gath he gets the extra bonus health so that's another thing. If someone scales off a of bonus health, it does give them extra stuff. So this would increase Cho'Gath's R damage. Um, I don't remember if Olaf has any bonus health interactions. But anything that has that has extra bonuses for having bonus health would also scale and get extra stuff off of that. So that's another minor perk. Okay, so let's talk about her strengths and weaknesses. Well, one weakness overall, and she doesn't have many right now, is that her ranges are very small. Except for her ult. Ult has a good range of 900. But her other stuff is small. So only 650 range on Whimsy. So that's really close. You have to get like very close to somebody to make that work. So that can be really dangerous um, in some fights to have to walk up to try to Whimsy somebody. Because you're going to be in like ability range or auto attack range for some people like Caitlyn. So Whimsy can be pretty dicey in that sense. 
Also, Pix is pretty low range in lane, so you're gonna, once again, open yourself up to retaliation from the enemy. Whereas, like, Janna's shield is, like, 800, I believe. And, like, Nami's wave, I think, is, like, 900. It might only be 800. But either way, other enchanters outrange her. Karma, I'm pretty sure her uh, Q is at least 900 range. Zyra's um, Q plant is... I think it's 900 range, but the seed range is 800. So it's typically it's it's something like that. So everyone outranges Lulu. That's the moral of the story. Everyone outranges Lulu pretty much most of the time. So it, that does make it a little bit more dangerous. Um, she also doesn't have very good escapes. You can whimsy yourself and try to run away, but she's pretty slow. She only has 330 base speed, and that's it for, for your defense. You can uh, wild growth yourself also and try to run away, but she doesn't have the same kind of speed that someone like Nami or Janna or Karma do. They all have other things that can speed them up. And if you're whimsying yourself, that means you can't polymorph the enemy. Um, so that just makes it kind of difficult sometimes to navigate hot situations where you get jumped on. However, you know, as I said before, the new runes do help with that quite a bit. You know, having bone plating plus chrysalis makes you a lot more durable than people would expect. So that's kind of a uh, that's a problem. She doesn't have a heal in lane either, so if you do take poke harassment, you're going to be in trouble. Once again, the runes help, but that's still an issue. So if they have a Nami or a Sona or a Karma and they just keep harassing you in lane, um, then you might eventually get poked out of lane. You can go for an early Reju bead, and that does build into Redemption, which is helpful. Um, but in theory, it could still be a problem. So that's just an issue to be aware of. So short ranges, limited escapes, uh, no heal, and really low base stats. So her health is really low. Um, she starts at 525 early. I guess that's not as low as Janna, but it's still on the low side. And she has fairly low armor. Some of the lowest armor in the game at 28. So, you know, she is super squishy, as, as you would expect on most enchanters. So that is a potential weakness of her, is that she can get all in and killed. Although, once again, resolved secondary helps a ton with that. Okay, her strengths, we went over this a lot. She has great early game aggression, which transitions really well into the mid game. Um, pretty short cooldowns, especially on her ult. 110 is great. Um, shield starts off base 10 second cooldown. W gets as low as 12 seconds. So, really nice. Excellent crowd control at W. Like, you just completely crush assassins. Riven, Camille, um, anyone else that's trying to run at you. If it's in a team fight, especially, you just polymorph them. If they don't have Quicksilver Sash, they're done <clears throat> most of the time. So, she's very good against assassins. Um, and then she has super good scaling with her passive and W, which we went over right here. 13 kills with no items um, it is pretty ridiculous <laughs> at level 9 in terms of stats. It is worth noting also, just very briefly, that P other enemies can intercept picks, and so can minions. So if you're trying to attack somebody through a minion wave, then... Um, it can intercept picks. However, like, so these bolts can be blocked by enemies. So it's like three little bolts that fire at somebody each time you fire. However, if you put E on them first, if you E them and then auto attack them, because the picks is right in their face, they're going to get hit by the three bolts. Even if you auto attack them through minions, the, all the bolts are still going to hit them because picks is on them. And that's why you want to make sure that you picks first, then auto attack, then Q for a really clean trade to make sure that you get all the damage in there. Okay, so let's talk about runes here really quickly. Um, recommended runes. So I recommend um, Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, and then Bone Plating and Chrysalis. There are a few options that you have here. So in terms of the runes. So um, I think always, if you're going Sorcery, you always want Airy. It's super powerful. Like I said, it it's just matches her playstyle really well. With early game aggression and scaling into a pretty respectable uh, shielder later on. Mana Flow Band, you can be kind of a Mana Hog early. You're not as bad as Nami or Sona, but you do use up some mana early. So having that Mana Flow is really nice um, before your first back when you can pick up multiple Fairy Charms. So that is nice. She does have um, very high Mana Regen. So she has 11 Mana Regen uh, per 5 at level 1, which is super high. So that means Fairy Charms are very, very effective on her. Um but yeah, her mana can be a problem early, so that's I would highly recommend getting that most of the time. You could get something like Ultimate Hat if you really wanted to, to get that extra cooldown on your ult. You do have a high-impact ult. It is on a pretty low cooldown anyways. 
I would rather just have more power in the early game with Lulu, honestly, because she's going to scale so well into the late game anyways that I think that mana flow is probably better. If you're super scared that you're going to die in lane and you do want extra protection, um, you know, in theory, you can go nullifying orb. Uh, like, you might do this against something like a Zyra or a Leona. Leona does quite a bit of magic damage um, early on, so that is an option. Or maybe Blitzcrank. This could be another one for Blitzcrank that could be good. Um, you are giving up quite a bit of mana. This gives you a lot of mana. But it does offer you protection, so, you know, if you're afraid you're going to get hooked by Blitz or Zyra's going to poke you out of lane or whatever, um, then this could be pretty good. I mean, getting that extra, you know, like... 40 to 50 damage early on is definitely um, something to consider, but that will definitely take away your ability to harass as much, so usually not worth it, but in extreme cases, maybe. Um, I wouldn't get absolute focus because you're going to be trading a lot, so there will be times where you're under 70% of your max mana, um, or max, uh, yeah, 70% under your max health, so you won't get as much ability power. Um, so your real choices here are Solarity and Transcendence. The AP doesn't matter. Don't worry about the bonus movement speed. I mean, you'll get, like, a few extra points of AP. That's not why you're getting this ability. The extra movement speed is a really big deal. Now, it's not worth a ton in terms of, like, gold value. I think movement speed's worth, like, 39.5 each. So, you know, you're only getting, like, 120 gold value out of this rune. And then, like, you'll get a couple of ability power as the game goes on, you know, so you might get like 200 gold out of this rune. So it's not that great in that sense. But movement speed is such a valuable stat early on, especially for dodging skill shots in lane, and especially because Lulu is very vulnerable. So that 3% move speed gives you like half a brown boot, pretty much. It's going to give you about um, 10 or 11 move speed. Because it's basically 3 move speed per 100 base that you have. You have 330, so that's 10 move speed. So that's like, you know, 40% of a brown boot. Um, so that's really nice for dodging bl blitz hooks. It's really nice for dodging like karma cues, recon cues, thresh hooks, you know, all of this stuff. It's going to be very, very helpful for you early on. So it's going to take your move speed to 340. So that's very good if they have a lot of skill shot champs you're worried about, primarily like Blitzcrank. Now, Transcendence is really nice um, into the mid game. It does give you that 10% ability or uh, cooldown reduction, which is really nice if you want to go lock it because you're not going to hit 40% if you go lock it in most games. Um, and cooldown reduction is extremely good on Lulu because her ult is very high impact, as is her W. So um, she loves the cooldown reduction. It's just a question of can you get away with not having the extra 10 movement speed. Um, so some lanes yes, some lanes no. So you have to think how dangerous is this lane. You know, if you're against something like a, a Tom Kench or a Braum or, you know, just something like that where it, it's not going to be as dangerous in lane then maybe you could get away with it. Or if you're against like a Janna or something, maybe you could go for Transcendence. Um, but you just kind of have to feel that out on a case-by-case -case basis. So I would say against like Blitzcrank, for example, Celerity, Janna, Transcendence. This does an easy thing. Um, and I would pretty much always go Scorch. You can proc this so many times in lane just by auto-attacking. And this does add up. This adds up over time quite a bit in terms of damage. So you want to almost always take Scorch. If it's a super farm off lane, if you're against me, I don't know. It's hard to think of a time when I wouldn't want Scorch, but, you know, if you think that the game's going to go super late, you could go ahead and grab Gathering Storm, but I, I just, I would pretty much, like, 99% of the time grab Scorch. And then secondary with this build, um, Bone Plating, super good. Uh, now, keep in mind that this damage is prevented after um, resistances are applied. So, you know, if you are, if someone's dealing, um, let's say they're dealing 50 damage to you and you have 100 magic resist, it's only going to end up dealing um, 25 damage to you because the 100 magic resist is going to reduce 50% um, of that. Um, so it gets reduced down to 25 first. And then the magic resist applies and would reduce it potentially by another, you know, 25 or whatever. So you would take no damage off of it. I'm pretty, I'm almost positive that's how it works. Um, taking damage, the same champion, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
So yes, I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And so that means that in theory, you're taking virtually no damage early on in trades. Like what will happen a lot of times, especially this is really good against picks users. If someone attacks you, like let's say that like Nami's trade pattern, for example, she walks up, she auto attacks you, then picks is going to hit you. Then she's going to hit you with her wave. It's going to block the picks, all of the damage off the picks pretty much. So picks is going to do like, you know, 15 to 20 damage. All of that gets negated. And then the wave is going to get negated also. So her initial auto is not going to get negated. But against a picks champion, it completely blocks picks when they do this. And any and two other attacks that they do. So you get pretty good value out of this against other picks users. And this is just really good against a lot of assassins. I mean, because it applies after resistances, once again. So, um, and there's a big difference in that. You know, if you're getting... I'm not going to do the math, but just imagine if you are getting hit for like 100 damage, you're blocking half of it, and then this gets reduced by an additional 30, you would only take 20 damage. Um, if it got if the 30 got applied first, then you would take the uh, you know 30 off of 100, get to 70, and then it would get reduced uh, by 50%, which would be 35. So in that scenario, you would take 35 damage instead of 20 damage. So trust me, it is really really good and there's a lot of people that are taking this right now and for good reason it's extremely strong chrysalis is another one that's very new a lot of i heard a lot of commentators i was watching freaks video and scars video they weren't really appreciating the full value of this this is really really strong this is a very good rune first of all 60 bonus health is pretty respectable especially on an enchanter who starts with 525 early game now, technically, it's not going to be worth a ton of um, gold. Gold, that's only valued at 2.66 each, so that's like 160 gold value. So it's not the most, like, insane rune early on, but it gives you protection early, and it scales really well later. So once you get that 15 ability power later on, now you're getting 326 gold value. So that is a pretty respectable rune. Any rune that starts to give you over 300 gold that's a minor rune is powerful. So... It's really nice early. It helps protect you against all ends. Bone plating plus chrysalis plus the 60 health you get off of going into resolve means that you're really hard to kill. <laughs> early game, you are deceptively very hard to kill as a Lulu in all ends. I mean, you're not going to be as hard to kill as like a Nautilus or a Braum or something like that, but it's it's going to be a lot tougher to kill you than most people would suspect. Um, so this gives you great early game protection, great scaling. You can still go second wind if you want to. Um... This is about a rejuve bead and a half worth of regen early on, so it's going to give you about 250 gold value in lane. It depends on how low you are. There's a lot of variability to this. I talked about this in my um, Enchanter itemization video on the channel, so be sure to check that out if you want to know more about these gold values of like runes, items, um, things like that. But ultimately, this is worth you know somewhere in the neighborhood of like 200 to 300 gold. So this is good if you're consistently getting poked in lane. So if you're against like a Karma or... A Nami or a Sona, um, someone who's doing consistent damage but is not trying to all in you, then this can be very good, especially before your first back. So it's useful, but it does not scale very well at all later on into the game. Because it's not this is not gonna matter when Zed tries to all in you, you know, at level six. That extra little bit of healing is not gonna matter. So it's pretty awful for all ends, but it's very good in the early game. Um, at sustaining against light trades in lane. So if you're against someone who's lightly trading with you, this might be an option. Chrysalis later on is going to be great because early on it's the health, it's the protection, and then it transitions later into that ability power, which scales so well with you know everything from your shield to your passive to your W to your ult. Ability power is very good on Lulu. To picks. Or not, not well, picks, yes, but also airy. Um, conditioning is another thing that is definitely worth considering. Um, now, this doesn't come online until 10 minutes into the game, but having uh, 8 bonus armor, 8 bonus magic resist increases your total armor magic resist uh, by 5%. So, you know, we could just call it, like, on Lulu, it's bonus, right? No, it's total armor and magic resist as bonus by 5%. So... Like 2.5 each. Well, let's call it 11. Let's just call it 11. Would be a reasonable number kind of in the mid game. So 11 times uh, 20 for the armor. That's 220 value. And then 11 times 18 plus 220. So you're getting about 418 gold value off of this when it comes off. But that's pure resistances. So that's good. That's the most valuable of these. 
but it also takes 10 minutes and doesn't do anything early. So that's why I like Chrysalis. It's just a good balance of early game, um, durability, and then also gives you a stat that you really want ability power because you don't need that much health. I mean, having 60 more health when you're Lulu in the mid game, you know, when you already have 1,000 health is not going to matter that much, but having that extra 15 ability power can be a pretty big deal. <clears throat> so I just think this is the best one for Lulu most of the time. But this... Maybe in an extreme circumstance, if you're just a, if you're against like a fizz or something, and you're afraid he's gonna one shot you later, I'll give you a clue. Nine x or eleven extra MR is probably not gonna save you, but that might be a situation. But like you know, ninety nine percent of the time you want one of these two, and I think right now the way that I've been playing it, I think eighty percent of the time you probably want Chrysalis. So this is like some corner cases, but Chrysalis is almost always gonna be the best option. <clears throat> Another option. If you're afraid that you're going to die in lane, you're just going to get completely bulldozed. Like maybe you like you're paired with an Ezreal and you are against a like a Leona Draven and for some reason you didn't want to dodge that game, maybe it's a promotion, um, something like that. You can go for a Guardian build. Um so you can go uh Guardian Bone Plating Chrysalis Revitalize and then as your secondary. It's not worth going into sorcery if you're not getting airy. So as a secondary, you could go Domination and then take um, Ingenious Hunter plus Zombie Wards. This will give you a much better mid-game because you can go into things like um, Redemption Locket and having that 40% CDR off of Ingenious is amazing. Then having uh, extra Vision Control off of Zombie, having extra Sweepers for Vision Control off of Ingenious. I've talked about that combination a lot. Ingenious plus Zombie is amazing on Enchanters, but you don't do any damage. I've tried this build. Um, you are not doing... You're doing like almost literally half the damage maybe even less maybe you're doing a third of the damage you would do with airy plus scorch in the laning phase so if you go guardian you're not doing a lot of damage but you know what if you're in a really heavy losing lane it's not gonna matter that you're not doing a lot of lane so it's like ezreal lulu versus draven leona draven zyra Jin zyra you know something like that you're probably gonna have to play for the mid game anyways so that is a pretty good scenario now this shield does scale better than airy later on um, and it provides a shield for both you and your ally for a pretty big shield so it's nice it's nice later on it's just you don't do any damage revitalize is also really good if you're going redemption and locket getting that extra you know five to fifteen percent healing and shielding is a big deal so that is nice and with all the activatables that lulu gets redemption locket mikhail's all that stuff ingenious is amazing but you're giving up your early game. You're basically saying, we can't fight early. I, I'm really afraid I'm going to die, so I'm going to play for the mid to late game. So it is viable, but your default should be the, the aggressive one, if at all possible, unless you're just going to get completely bulldozed. Okay. Um, okay, so let's talk about recommended items here, and then we'll go ahead and hopefully close this out in about an hour. Um now, I went ahead and put kind of your reasoning here, why you should get these different items. So this is kind of like the TLDR version, and then I also have a more detailed sort of explanation here. Um, Frostfang versus Nomad's Medallion. So, Frostfang is what everybody's going to take on Lulu. Most of the pros, every guy's going to tell you to take Frostfang. And I do like Frostfang a lot. The only problem with Frostfang is it can take a long time to get your wards off of Frostfang. I mean, there have been some lanes, even if you dominate the lane, Right, even if you're crushing them, you know, under tower, sometimes like you'll just break the lane so fast that you can't even get to Frostfang. Like there have been some lanes where you know the AD carry and I have had like four kills in the lane, and I still don't activate Frostfang until like 15 minutes into the game. It can take a really long time to activate this, especially if you're getting destroyed in lane and there's it's just not safe to harass them at all. You know, in that Draven Leona scenario with Ezreal, um, it's gonna take forever. So yes, the AP is good, right? The extra 20 AP and the 18 on-hit damage. That's very real. That's a lot of damage early on, and that suits Lulu's early aggression very well. But the issue with that is it takes longer to get your wards, and you're going to get substantially less gold in the mid to late game. So if it goes late, and you're against the support who's going coin, they're going to outscale you. And I've done the math on this in a past video. Basically, you know, between like the... like. It depends on how often you're able to auto attack, but between like the 13 minute mark to the um, you know 20 minute mark, you're going to be getting um, 
more gold value out of it. But if it goes past like 22 or 23 minutes, then coin starts to overtake that. Now, that calculus has changed a little bit. We can pull it up real, real quick here because I know this is going to be something that people will want to see, um, even though I've talked about it in past videos. So if you look at Frostfang, okay, then we'll look at Nomads. Let's take a gander here. Okay. So this is super good right when you purchase it, right? You get um, 20 ability power, 10 cooldown, 50% base mana regen, and you get 18 bonus magic damage on hit, which is really nice. So it's not quite the same stat because you can only proc it three times per... Um, you know, three times per 30 seconds. But realistically, you're not going to harass... I mean... You will, but I don't think it's going to be that often where you're harassing and not getting Frostfang off in lane. Um, because you're waiting on your cooldowns. Like, you're waiting on your 10-second shield a lot of the times. Now, if you shield auto Q them, it will use all three charges, but there will be some times where you can't go up and shield them every single time, every 10 seconds. Like, sometimes you'll be warding, sometimes you'll be doing other things. So that's not entirely accurate, but if we count that strictly as bonus, basically bonus on-hit damage, which is kind of the closest equivalent, it's about 450 gold worth of a stat that you get out of that. So even if you only say, well, that's only going to happen half the time, it's still like, you know, 200 to 250 gold value. So it's pretty nice. And that's not calculated here. But, you know, the general gold value is about 950 gold. Okay. Now, if you look at Nomad, this is 536 gold. So that means that the other um, ability, so Frostfang is going to have, you know, like 500 or 415 on the surface, but really closer to 615 extra gold value um, over Nomads. Now, Nomads did get the 10 movement speed, which helps a little bit. So, but this is much, much more consistent gold. This is very, very consistent gold. Because what happens is with Frostfang, once you're outside the laning phase, you can't just walk up and E that Zed you know, when, when everybody's kind of A-ramming mid lane, or you can't just walk up and try to cue the vein when she's at three items, right? So once the lanes break, once laning phase ends, you get an astronomically lower amount of gold off of this. You're probably only going to be getting the two gold per second. You might be lucky to get one proc on average per 30 seconds. You might get more than that. Um, but, you know, let's say that this is giving you three gold per 30 off of this coin you're almost always going to get like two gold coins per minute on average um maybe not quite that much but i would say it's somewhere near that it, you know if you want to average it out and say you know well maybe you're getting a coin and a half per minute or something on average i think it's probably even more than that but anyways let's just say it's 70 gold per minute that's still more than double what you're getting off of this what you're probably going to be getting off of this if you get like you know one and a half procs of this per minute you know it's, it's more than double so that means that you're generating like 40 extra gold per minute let's say lanes break around 12 minutes you're generating an extra and they both get two gold per 10 so that that's negligible um but you're getting you know minimum an extra 40 gold per minute probably much more than that so 40 gold per minute you know if the game lasts 20 minutes extra you'd be getting an extra 800 gold so in a 30 minute game you're getting an extra 800 gold worth of value off of this item. And so it starts to surpass, right? So if it's 40 per minute, what was the difference here? We were saying it was like 415 up to 615. Um, let's just call it 550. So yeah, about what I said, right? So if lanes break around 22 minutes in another like 13 and three quarters minutes, so about 14 minutes, it's going to surpass... Um, Frostfang. Usually it's a lot faster than that. I'm giving very generous numbers to Frostfang, and I'm being very conservative with Nomads here. But, you know, once again, about 12 minutes to 25 minutes, probably even less than that, Nomad is going to start to outpace this. And that gold can be used on items which are much more efficient than just the raw stats that you get off of Frostfang. So completing something like Redemption, completing something like Art and Sensor is far more valuable than the gold that goes into that, right? It's far more valuable than just the AP or than just the mana regen off of those items because 
<clears throat> because of their passives and their actives, right? Because those are super, super cost efficient items. Those items are like multiple hundreds of percentage points efficient. And so it's way, way better to complete those items than to just get more mana regen or, or um, AP. So what that means is that this is this gold off of medallions is even more valuable than it appears because you can use it to buy really gold efficient items. You can't buy anything off of these Frostfang stats. You're just losing the gold in exchange for having these raw stats early on. So that's why coin is actually a lot better of an option on a lot of champions than people think. And this is why I get coin on people like Rakan and Janna who don't have great early games because they're not going to leverage that on hit damage as much. They're going to be playing for kind of a mid to late game. So... It is possible on Lulu, if you want vision earlier, usually you can complete the Nomad's vision quest at like 9 minutes in the game versus Frostfang. Like I said, sometimes it takes 15, sometimes 20 minutes to complete that quest, depending on what's going on in the lane. The Nomad is just much, much more consistent to get vision down earlier, and it's going to give you that guaranteed gold in the mid game. Although the big point is you're going to lose a lot of damage because you're not going to have the on-hit damage off of Frostfang, and you're not going to have the, um, the extra AP. So once again, it just depends. If you're going to get bulldozed by Draven and, you know, Leona in lane, you might want to go Nomads. If you can completely dominate them, if you have the Draven on your team and they have the Ezreal Janna, then maybe you go Frostfang so you can add that extra pressure. So you have to pressure, you have to do something valuable with Frostfang in lane because you're going to get outscaled later on. So if you're pressuring, if you're forcing the AD carry to miss CS, if you're taking towers faster, um, if you're forcing them to back, um, if you're generating kills and assists then yes, Frostfang is definitely worth it. If you're just going to sit there and chill and not really do anything a lot of the time, if you're just going to watch your AD carry farm, you're losing a lot of value. So don't just get Frostfang just because everyone says it. Get it because you're actually going to do something productive and aggressive. If you're just going to chill, if you're uncomfortable with the matchup, if you're kind of newer to the game or whatever, just get Nomads if you're still learning. right? If you're still not comfortable with aggressive trades, get Nomads. It's just going to be a much safer, more reliable bargain later on. Or if you're in a lane where you're going to get bulldozed, go ahead and get nomads. Okay, redemption is another item, super powerful. I talk about this all the time. The thing with redemption is it gives you really good early game mana regen. We'll just pull it up here. It gives you very good early game mana regen. That 150% is super awesome. If you get ardent first, having only that 50% mana regen, you're definitely going to feel it. You're going to be running out of mana in those early fights. But with redemption. You're not going to run out of mana as Lulu most of the time. You have some base health regen, which is very helpful in lane. Because remember, Lulu doesn't have any regen, so that's super useful on her early. Um, it has a lot of things that you want, like cooldown reduction and heal. Um, and it has a 5,500 range ultimate that... Well, it's basically an ultimate. It's an active that heals for quite a lot and scales really well with the rest of your items. So if you get a Mikhail's, if you get an Ardent Sensor... All of these things scale super well with Redemption because it gets three times the benefit of plus healing and shielding on that. And um, you can like use this globally, basically, uh, if you're really good at watching your mini-map and using this appropriately. I mean, you can throw this mid lane. Um, you can use this if you have to to try to clear out minions um, who, are, who are about to take a tower. You can try to snipe people with this. So if that one guy is getting away with like 1% health under tower, I've sniped people with this before because it does... 10% of their max health and true damage, which is quite a lot. So those are kind of corner cases, clearing minions and sniping people with it. But there's a lot of uses for this. It's very, very helpful. It's really hard for the enemy to win a team fight if you have this and they don't. Um, so it's very good. Just guarantee It's not guaranteed because people can run out of it. It does take quite a bit of skill to use, but it's always useful has a lot of utility to it versus if you rush something like ardent sensor and your 80 carry is a complete turkey you know if they're like oh and four ezreal or something like that it's going to be a waste because they're just not going to really utilize that stat very well so keep that in mind i think a lot of people just mindlessly rush ardent sensor just because it is such a good item on lulu and it is so let's go ahead and talk about ardent sensor here it's an extremely good item on lulu but you need your 80 carry to be competent <coughs> right it doesn't have. It has really low mana regen, and it has no health regen. So the item, the these things are not going to be good if it's a contested lane. If you're just bulldozing the lane, yes, getting an amp tome early is really good because you're just going to completely stomp them. 
So that is helpful. You do get the Fairy Charm, so you do get Mana Reach and you do get extra offense, but you don't have as much defense. So that's something to, to keep in mind if you're in a losing lane. Um, the 8% move speed is really good. And they nerfed this last season. Um, so it's not as good as it was, but it's still pretty good. I mean, level 9, getting giving your AD carry 20% extra attack speed is very nice. Um, that's like, what, 450-ish? 500. 500 uh, extra stats off of that. Uh, the attack speed. Remember, attack speed is really good because they're going to trigger picks a lot more. And you give them a uh, bonus on hit magic damage, which once again is very good when they have all the attack speed off of Whimsy. So this is just a match made in heaven for Lulu where you put picks on somebody, um, you buff them up with Whimsy, and they just start going off with Ardent Sensor. It's very, very strong. And this is really good if they have, if they're going like Gensu's, Witsen, things like that, because once again, this is giving them attack speed to stack that Gensu's faster, and it's giving them another on hit modifier. And if they have Hurricane, which is very common on Gensu users, if they have Hurricane, then each bolt of the Hurricane is going to proc this on hit. So instead of just doing, you know, 12 on hit damage, all of a sudden it's doing 36 in a team fight, which is really nice. So this is a very good item. They nerfed it specifically because they didn't want it to be as good of a rush item. But um, it's still really good on Lulu, especially if you're ahead, especially if you're AD carry is competent if they have a couple of kills or if they're at least going even with the enemy AD carry. And if they're going to go for a Gensu's build, this is pretty much a must. You know, if you have a Kog'Maw or a Varus or, um, you know, a Twitch. Twitch may not necessarily always go Gensu's, but he does benefit very heavily from these stats. So, Ardent Sensor, extremely good, but no defense. Redemption is just a neutral item. It's always relevant. Even if your AD carry is a turkey, you can still use the Redemption to help out your mid lane or to win team fights or whatever. So Redemption is good, neutral item, if you're not really sure what's going on. Ardent Sensor is very good if your AD carry is ahead, if they seem really strong. Um, I would almost always rush one of those, either Redemption or Ardent, depending on what's going on. If you're not sure, if you want to feel it out a little bit, you're like, well, we're doing all right in this lane, but I'm not sure we might need Redemption here. Um, you can always get a Forbidden Idol first and then figure out after that on your um, you know, on your third back whether you want to transition that uh, Forbidden Idol into an Ardent Sensor or Redemption. So you do have options. It's a pretty modular build. Okay, Locket is another one. You never want to rush Locket, but Locket plus Ardent Sensor means you're going to win every team fight if the enemy doesn't have that a lot of times. Um, it does also give you some defense, which is really nice if they have um, an Assassin, either an AP Assassin or an AD Assassin. It can be pretty good. Um, it's very cost inefficient, though. It only gives you 76% gold efficiency. Um, it has no mana regen on it. It has no AP. It has no um, plus healing or shielding. Has no move speed, has no health regen, so the stats are just strictly a like just like raw like defensive stats. So it's terrible to rush it. Don't ever rush this. But after you get redemption, this gets a lot better because the extra plus ten percent healing and shielding does apply to locket. Um, and the locket shield plus the redemption healing is such a great combo. You can locket shield buy some time and then that two and a half seconds the redemption's going to land as well so that's been a very common one two punch over the last year and a half redemption plus locket and it's still a pretty good build on lulu the downfall is if you get locket you're not getting ardent sensor so you know you're sacrificing a lot of offense for some defense so i would only get this if they have a really heavy team fight threat you know they have like a fiddlesticks that's getting kind of fed or they have like i don't know a zigs that's kind of fed you know, you might have to get it if they have something like a, um, a Zed that's really fed just to help defend your AD carry by giving them that extra shield. Um, you know, it's the burst shield is really nice. Now, they're going to change this item in the near future. They might do it next patch. They're wanting to make it into like this little dome thing that reduces damage. So, you know, be sure to check out my content when that comes out so that I can, you know, give you some up-to-date information on that. But as of right now... It's a pretty good option on Lulu, but we'll have to see what they do to it in the future. Other option, pretty straightforward, Mikhail's. This is great if they have CC. It's great with Redemption. The 20% scales super well um, with Redemption. Um, but you'd primarily get this if they have very heavy crowd control. So if they have um, like an Ash Arrow, a Morgana Bind, a Fiddlesticks Fear. Um, it does not work on Malzahar Ult because that's a Suppress. But like anything that's going to 
have some very pesky CC that you want to deal with, a Varus ult, um, then this, this could be a good option. So, you know, and it does have some magic resist on it as well. So that is a, a decent defensive buy against mages. Um, so it does have the mana regen, which is nice. It does have 40% health regen, has CDR, has plus 20% healing and shielding. It has really nice health regen. So if you're against a poke lane and you go redemption plus uh, Mikhail's Crucible, you're going to have a lot of health regen. You know, it's going to give you a uh, 250% health regen, which on Lulu is quite a lot. I mean, she doesn't have a huge amount of base health regen, but if you're looking at like level 11 when you might get this item, 11 health regen, um, and that's per five seconds, I believe. Um, then all of a sudden, you're getting an extra 27 health regen uh, per five, which is a big deal. So that would you know bring your total close to almost 40 health. So you're getting um, quite a bit back. Uh, so, you know, not amazing, not as good on her as it is on someone like Soraka, but it's still a pretty respectable item. So you're going to have to probably get that against like Ash, Morg, Leo, Fid, Lulu. Well, you, you're playing Lulu, so that's <laughs> that's irrelevant. Um, like Maokai, Sejuani, Varus, these are all good options. Okay, other possible items. So these are kind of weird. You won't get these all the time, but situationally they could be pretty good. And then we'll go ahead and end the guide here. Dang it, I wanted to make it under an hour. Ah! But I also want to be thorough. Um... Banner of Command, I have a whole video about that. Just watch it. It is kind of goofy on Lulu, but it does have really nice base stats. Um, so it it's cost-efficient by itself at 2381 value. Um, and then having the 20% movement speed near towers already makes it you know 150% efficient, 144%. And then getting that extra minion to help push side waves, as well as don't forget that that generates gold. So whenever that minion kills people or kills minions, you get the gold for it. So in most games, you'll get at least two or 300 gold off of this item. So that makes it even more efficient. In long games, you might get even more than that, depending on how you use it. This also helps siege. So if you're against something like an Anivia, a Ziggs, or whatever, having a magic-resistant minion is very useful. People are very aware that Banner is good right now because of the way that they buffed Baron um, and they, they fixed a bug on Banner. Um, people are aware now, but it's been good all preseason and it's still good even after the nerf. So you don't want to get it all the time, but the primary use for this is it has 60 armor, which is excellent. So if they have a fed assassin, they have that Zed that has five kills or they have that Rengar or that Kane that's got five kills, you're going to need some heavy armor. Okay, and that sucks because you might have to get this instead of something like Ardent Sensor, but, you know, you can't do anything if you're dead. So sometimes it's better just to survive. Um, so it's not the most amazing item on her, but it is nice. It's a great survival tool for armor that helps you split push. So if your team is really far behind, if you can't win a team fight, if your team's down 15 kills and there's just no way you can win a 5v5, this does help you apply extra pressure. Or if they have something like an Anivia, like I said, and you're just there's no way you can siege them, even if you're winning, you need extra side lane pressure, this can help give you that. So good item. Situationally, if you need a 60 armor item, and if you want extra split pressure because team fighting is going to be difficult for you one way or another, or sieging is going to be difficult for you. Another option that's another 60 gold item, or a 60 armor item that you could get is Zeke's. Now, this also is going to look weird on Lulu. You're not going to see a lot of guides that recommend this. Um, but this item's actually pretty efficient. Once again, has that 60 armor. Very helpful. So, you know, the times when you would get this, if they have a fed 80 assassin... Um, but instead of split pushing, this gives you a lot more damage on your AD carry. So you have a pretty low cooldown ultimate. It's 110 at level 1, and it gets down, I think, to as low as 80 seconds. And then that gets modified by um, cooldown reduction. So if you have 40% cooldown reduction, you know, you can get that down to, um, well, no, it'd be a 0.6. There you go. You can get this down to 48 seconds, which is about 45 seconds, right? So if you have 40% cooldown reduction, level 3 Lulu ult, then these are going to be up at about the same time every time. And this is going to give your AD carry effectively 20% bonus magic damage on hit. Now, I don't think crit interacts with this. Um, so it says it is... Um, so it does 25% on hit and then does 12.5% one second after... Um, 
So yeah, usually this gets used. Your eight, your eighty carries just going to be attacking a lot. So the overtime damage is not going to matter. Just effectively call it twenty five percent bonus on hit damage, um, and yeah, it's it's not going to matter much outside of that. Now a lot of champions, very few champions are going to build really heavy AD builds. You know, the Gensu's build and even the Infinity Edge build does not have a lot of AD. A lot of people get attack speed, right? So it's either going to be Infinity Edge plus um, Static Shiv plus Rapid Fire Cannon, or it's going to be Gensu's plus like Wit's End plus Blade of the Rune King. So either way, you're not going to have a lot of AD in these builds. But, you know, let's just say even if you have 100 AD, it's still going to provide 20, uh, 25 on-hit damage. So 25 times, I think it's on-hits worth... I think 25 each. That'd be 625 gold value that you're putting on your 80 carry. So that's not as good as something like Ardent Sensor, but once again, it gives you defense and it gives you extra damage. The extra storm and stuff is not going to matter for you because you're not going to be close enough to people to deal that extra damage. Um, you're primarily just getting this for the extra on-hit damage and as an armor item. So if you don't want to die, if they have an assassin, but your team can team fight and you have a really competent um ad carry or assassin just someone who's going um gensus so you can use this on master yi you can use it on um I'm trying to think master yi is a good one Jax, um twitch varus kogma just a lot of jinx a lot of these like really fast attacking champions then that could be pretty good so it's another option once again it's not amazing it's not something you want to get all the time but if you need that 60 armor item your team can fight and you have a fed on hit person you don't care about the split push as much you could get this instead of banner of command um as a defensive choice another thing shirelia is this is pretty good for um an engaged team if your team if you're afraid your team's going to get kited a lot um so this is very good with something like a skarner an olaf hecarim um Nasus. Just if you have Jax, if you have a lot of melee champions that could get kited that just want want to, you have a team that just wants to run at them, a hard engaged team, this is a pretty good option. It also gives you a little bit of safety if you're afraid they're going to try to run you down. This does give you a bit more mobility. Um, it is fairly cost efficient, it's like ninety four percent. But one of the big issues with this item is it doesn't have any mana regen, so you can't rush it. It has to be a second or more item. It doesn't have any health regen, um, so. You know, it's kind of rougher in lane as well for the same reason that um, it's rough because it doesn't have mana reach in. Um, it doesn't have plus healing and shielding, so it doesn't synergize with uh, redemption that well. It doesn't directly boost the offense of your AD carry like something like an Ardent Sensor would do. Um, but it does have its uses at times if you have a hard engage team comp. So it's very good on champions like Rakan, but Lulu really doesn't want to run in a lot of times. So it's not good on you personally. It's good for escaping, but it's primarily, once again, if you have those bruisers that want to run in and you just want to give them some extra help. You know, Hecarim is the number one because he actually benefits from move speed. But even, like I said, Olaf, um, Skarner, Warwick, Nasus, Jax, Irelia... You know, those types of champions. Illawi. Then it's it's a good option. So if your Olaf's 10 and 0, this might be a good thing to get. Your Olaf's 10 and 0, but your Twitch is like 0 and 5, then you might want to get a Shrelia's instead of an Ardent Sensor because, you know, the movement speed's probably going to be more beneficial. Um, okay, Athene's Unholy Grail. This is kind of a weird one. I can't even think of many situations where you would want this item. I mean, basically, it's going to give you personally more healing, um, more shielding, more ability power. So I would have to run the math on this a little bit more. You can get this if you get um, Frostfang, Redemption, Ardent Sensor as like a third item. And I think it'll give you around 100 ability power. Um, so let's see. If you have so 150 base mana regen off of Redemption plus 50 off Frostfang plus um like 50 off of uh ardent sensor take you to that times um 0.25 equals five no no no, no i'm doing that wrong okay so it was 250 so four eight ten okay so it's going to give you 50 ability power 
and then it has 30 base. So you'll get around 80 ability power. So you get 80 ability power, which is pretty nice. So like 80 times, you know, 1740. You'll get an extra, well, let's do 50. That'll make it easier. 50 times. So that passive can give you up to 1087 extra gold. So that starts to make it... Um, well, this already includes... Oh, I forgot the 100 off of this. So I could give you up to 300 then. So that's 150 plus 100. Um, then we'll just say Frostfang if you got this second item. So that'd be 300. So that would give you 12. That gives you the 60 plus 30, 90. Okay, so it is closer to 90 to 100. I was right. Because I forgot to include its own base mana regen. So it can be a pretty gold efficient item. You know, if you're getting an extra whatever, 1,000 gold off of it, you know... But the problem with this is it just it doesn't do a lot for your allies. It does heal them a little bit if you do damage, but you're not going to be leveling up your Q a lot. You're going to be using your E for a shield to put picks on allies, so you're just not doing a lot of damage as Lulu in fights. This is like really only good on like Sona a lot of times in team fights. Maybe in some pinches Nami, maybe, but they're just a lot better options. So I guess if you are you know if you just need like a sixth item or something. Or if you already have, yeah, if you already have Redemption, Ardent Sensor, Locket, and they just don't have any CC on their team, so you just don't think that Mikhail's is going to be that useful, and you just need that, you know, fourth or fifth item, you just want some more, like, just greedy personal stats, you could go for Athenes. So, you know, very, very situational. So there might be some cases where you'd want that, but it's pretty rare. And then finally, your best matchup's going to be uh, Vayne, Twitch, Echo, Camille... A lot of times because you can use your E to reveal these champions so they can't go invisible. Um, and you can harass them early on. They don't have a lot of range, so they're very susceptible to harassment early. And you mess with their invisibility mechanics with your E. They're also pretty close range. At least Venus, you can polymorph her, so if she doesn't have Quicksilver Sash, you can completely wreck her. A lot of Twitches will open up close range, so you can usually polymorph him too unless he um, opens at max range. You can mess with champions that really rely on certain abilities for defense. Um, and you can crush them before they can use those abilities. So, you know, if Echo tries to go in thinking he's going to be able to ult to go back out, you can polymorph him so he can't ult. Kill him that way. Or um, something like a Vladimir so that he can't pull. Something like a Swain so that he can't ult. So you can shut off some key interactions with certain champs um, with your polymorph who need their ultimates or other abilities for defense. Um, and then something like Camille, just any sort of assassin that wants to run at you, you know, Riven, Camille, Fiora, um, you can polymorph them, uh, Master Yi, Kha'Zix, Rengar, Zed, all these champions, if you get a polymorph off on them and they don't have a Quicksilver Sash, they're probably going to die because they're really squishy and they rely on their either killing the person immediately or on their mobility. She's best with Kog'Maw, Twitch, Jinx, Trist, um... Oh, Varus. I need to put Varus here also. Uh, Cog and Varus, especially because they tend to get Wits End plus Gensus. And so the Wits End lowers the magic resist um, on the target, which means Pix is going to do even more damage. So that's really good. And anyone who gets Gensus is going to be very good because that W is going to speed them up like very, very well. So they're very good with um, Ardent Sensor also, which Lulu loves. So yeah, anyone that benefits very heavily from attack speed that has special on-hit interactions like Cog, Varus, Twitch, or just people who get a lot of attack speed in general like Jinx, um, is going to benefit. Anyone who gets Hurricane is also going to benefit uh, because you're probably going to get Ardent Sensor. So that's Jinx, Twitch. You know, all of these guys are probably going to get Hurricane. Um, and then Tristana too. Because you can be very aggressive with Tristana early, and she benefits very heavily from attack speed as well. Um, your tough matchups are uh, just the harassment healers in lanes so like Nami, Soraka, Karma, Zyra. All in champions like Blitzcrank or um, Leona can also be kind of rough, like hard engage, heavy early game damage champions. Uh, but primarily things either outrange you or out heal you early on and out damage you can be problematic. But she can still win these matchups um but they are a little bit harder than others out there so anyways <coughs> that's gonna be it thank you very much hope you enjoyed this guide and i'll see you next time